So Russia is transferring artillery and motorized rifle units to the war front from the areas where they are being replenished. So they started replenishing all their troops, all their equipment and everything else. They're getting it all running again and they're all moving this all over the place. Belarus, what are they doing in Belarus? Well, you asked. Here we go. I mean, they're planting mines for some reason all along the forest roads, bypass roads, bridges, and all the areas on the border of Ukraine. Why would they be doing that? One has to ask themselves this, right, folks? I mean, come on. I mean, why are you going to be doing all this? And in Belarus, they're also, what they're doing is there's a huge missile and airstrikes from the territory of Belarus. So they've lined the border with Ukraine with all these missiles and artillery strikes and everything else. And I don't know, maybe they're uh, jumping in Putin's back pocket. Who knows? All right. All I know is there's a lot of stuff that's going on around over there. There's a lot of stuff going on around the world we're going to be discussing today. And we really need to be aware of what is taking place. And we this way here, we can plan for what we need to do for an emergency type situation. Putin may have failed to take Ukraine in a swift military strike, but in one regard, his war has already been success. If you think about it, economy is splintering into a million pieces and the West conflict of what is taking place as well as all those developing worlds are slowly revealing themselves. A food expert also did warn that the world faces a global crisis in just 10 weeks. Echoing a warning from the UK president, Russia has blocked most all ports, so to speak of, maritime opportunities to export food from that region. Our grain, barley, sunflower, and more, a lot of the things that we have that we ship Zelensky said on Saturday, there will be a crisis in the world, the second crisis after the energy one, which as he said was provoked by Russia, which in contrary to that, we were already headed for an energy crisis. That had started before they invaded Ukraine and all the sanctions started rolling down from the West and NATO, and all those. But it just got kind of pushed ahead a little bit because of Russia invading Ukraine. Russia has accused Germany now of remilitarizing their military in the same way, as they put it, as Adolf Hitler did back in World War II in Germany. Germany today, they approved a deal to release $100 billion to start to build up its army after Moscow offensive. You know, they invaded Ukraine. So a lot of these countries, you know, they're jumping on the bandwagon. Um, Finland, uh, Switzerland, they're all wanting to join the NATO. You've got uh, Germany now that is beefing up their military. They just dumped $100 billion dollars. And they're going to start refitting all their equipment and stuff with the newer stuff. And, you know, they're, they don't want to be caught with their pants down. And Russia, you know, their foreign ministry there, uh, the, the spokeswoman for the foreign ministry, she says, we take that as a, another confirmation that Berlin is on the path to renew its military. And she said, this is how they were. And this is how could this end? This is well known in history. It appears to be a reference to the Nazi Germany's rearmament program in the 1930s. They are restarting. Just so you all know, on September 1st, 1939, Hitler invaded Poland from the west. Two days later, France and Britain declared war on Germany, beginning the World War II. On September 17th, the Soviets invaded Poland from the east. World War II took place from September 1st, 1939 to September 2nd, 1945. 
Now we really need to pay attention to some of this stuff. Okay, folks. Now let's move across the water a little bit. We have what's taking place over in China. There's two different things that are going on in China. You know, in Shanghai, they had all those huge lockdowns. Um, they have started lifting all those lockdowns and everything. So all this stuff is starting to move again. It's going to take time, though. Okay. There is already a backlog of cargo that is setting on shore over there. They estimate around 260 thousand 20-foot containers which was not shipped from shanghai in april because of the lockdowns all right and the rebound will have a bullwhip effect across all supply chains so what's going to happen is we're going to run out of stuff and then all of a sudden it's going to be another huge backup at the ports a lot of the ports are all caught up now i mean they're, they're looking great out there but you know all this stuff is going to start hitting all at once you know, the Chinese lockdowns are hitting the global container distribution system that already is either severely stressed, all right, or facing reduced compatibilities due to, you know, the past uh, congestion. You know, I mean, there was at one point, what, over 100 and some odd ships setting off the port over in L.A. So, you know, even if the lockdowns were to end today, all lockdowns, they said, in China, because uh, they haven't all ended yet. The percentage and capacity of the container system would be totally jeopardized for the foreseeable future. And then on the other part of the Chinese, okay, you know, they want to take over Taiwan. They want to move in on Taiwan. They have been moving men around. There have been uh, quite a few close calls in the air of between the Taiwan military and the Chinese military. Um, it's getting to be another hot zone, just like what is taking place between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, maybe it's just another thing that's going on, and a lot of people over there are worried. Now the whole thing still stands. If something does go south, is the United States going to step in and do something, or are we going to supply more military arms? Um, that'll be, I guess, uh, another one we'll have to wait and see. Um, now let's move on over. We're going to talk a little bit about OPEC real quick and what's being done there. OPEC did agree to start producing more oil per barrel and everything else. Uh, just not enough to really put a dent in anything here, folks. So, I mean, it's just, uh, um, one of these little things just to kind of make it look like they're trying to help. Um, supposedly our president is supposed to be going over there and smoozing with them or something to try to get them to uh, release more oil and more barrels per day. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is the world is not investing enough in energy, period, you know, not enough to replace what we lose every year and meet rising demands. You know, the demand just keeps going up. We would have found out this sooner if it wasn't for COVID. The bigger problem today is that what we've lost over the last two years, which is, ref you know, all the refineries and um, all those type of things, there is no easy fix for that problem and that issue. You see, it takes a long time to uh, get these refineries back up and running. Or if they are putting in new refineries, you know, it takes a while to build these things. It's just like they can snap their fingers and there they are. The energy we need now, traditional or renewable, should have been invested in, in years ago. It wasn't, and at least not at the scale we needed. So they did put a little money into it, but evidently these analysts and everybody else that is in the government could not see the writing on the wall where we were going to be in the boat we're in now. With no relief in sight, something has to give, and it's probably going to be the global economy if you ask me do i think there's going to be a world war three i have no idea none of us know if he's going to push that button over there none of us know if he's going to try to get other people to help him out and invade ukraine or invade other countries we just don't know what's taking place i know that uh putin has made quite a few different statements because he is not happy with the united states and now he is accusing us with sending these long-range missiles systems over there that, um, you know, we are in basically engaging in World War III. We have to wait and see how far he's going to take this and what he's going to do. 
But just be aware that if something does go down or anything else, we will be the last ones to know. We will not be the first to know. We'll be the last to know. Like the last in line. Uh, great song. And But, you know, we're going to be the last ones to know. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that you are doing whatever you can. You need to be prepped. You need to be ready. You need to be covering all your bases. Um at this point in time, folks, you know, it's really not a fact of, you know, buying like the freeze dried foods and all this. Don't even worry about that anymore because a lot of people just can't afford it to begin with. Even if it is on sale, I'll, if I catch it, I'll still throw something out there. So if you do have the means to do that, that's great. If not, you need to make sure you're starting with your rice. You want to make sure you're starting with beans. You want to start with canned goods you know, canned vegetables, canned potatoes, um, canned fruit, all this different type of stuff. Then you want to move over. You want to make sure that you have plenty of rice. And rice is a great staple to have. Pasta is also another great staple that you want to make sure that you do have. You want to make sure that you do have flour and sugar, spices, salt, all this kind of stuff. Just start buying whatever you can when you go to the store. If you see it on sale or whatever, just do what you can to try to make sure that you and your family are prepared because the world is going crazy, folks. The chaos is getting out of hand and we need to avoid the chaos. As the sign says over there, folks, you know, because survival is the key. It really is. But the ball's all in your court, too. So today, I just wanted to bring you some information that's out there that's been going on, uh, taking place over the last few days. And uh, yes, it is very disturbing, and it is uh, very eye-opening. And hopefully, um, you people all listen and heed the warnings. Um, I'm sure there's going to be people out there that do not or they do not like the video or anything like that because sometimes the truth hurts. And I'm not one for sugarcoating anything, so I'm sorry if the truth hurts. Um, I apologize now, but guess what, folks? It's got to be said. Um, we, you, we have to be prepared. We have to be ready. We have to be um, taking care of ourselves because nobody else is going to do it for you plain and simple. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me in this video today. Please hit that like button, share, subscribe to the channel if you would please. And always, always remember, I'll catch all of you on the flip side.